you do have to bring a government ID to the testing center. It must not be expired. It cannot be your university ID. It must be a government issued ID like a driver's license or a passport or a non-driver state ID. If your name on your government ID does not match the name on your LSAC admission ticket, contact LSAC immediately. You can always email them at lsacinfo at lsac.org and they will help you resolve this, but do it sooner rather than later. It's not as if on test day, they're answering emails at, at 7.59 a.m. before the test begins. If you have any questions or concerns about what to bring to the test center, what you can bring, what you can't bring, issues with your ID, email them now. And if it's an issue about bringing medication or something like that, and LSAC says it's okay, print out that email and bring it with you to the test center to help you potentially avoid any issues with the proctors. Of course, there are no guarantees. The proctors are only human, and they're doing this part-time as independent contractors, I believe, most likely. So there's no guarantees with them, but at least bringing an email printout could reduce the likelihood of having an issue. With the paper LSAT, don't wait until the end of the section to bubble. Don't wait until the 35 minute mark because the proctors may forget to give you the five minute warning and there could be issues with the precision of the timing. On the digital LSAT, of course, this is not an issue, but for those taking July, you could still be getting paper. Make sure you don't wait till the end to bubble. In general, don't focus on other people at the test center. Don't talk to other people at the test center. You never know what they could say that could throw you off. People sometimes brag sometimes, or they just say things that are plain not true, and you don't need that stress. So just be off in your own corner. It's not your job to counsel them or give them advice or anything like that. It's, it's, it might sound selfish, but this is your day, and it's up to you to make it happen for yourself. And part of that involves not getting wrapped up in other people's problems. So just stick with yourself. Bring some warm-up problems to the test center maybe photocopies or printouts of actual LSAT problems that you've done before and don't find especially difficult. Bring them with you, maybe do them in the car or do them at a coffee shop nearby or in the lobby, depending on where you're at. And then of course, throw them out before you enter the test center. It's nice to warm up a little bit and so that the first questions you're doing on test day are not the actual ones that count. Don't try anything new on the test itself as well. So Use all the strategies that you've been using up to this point with your timed exams. And by the way, I do recommend, like I put in the chat here, do at least a few exams. Ideally, you've done a half dozen or ideally even more than that, 10 before LSAT test day that are five sections under realistic test day conditions. And you have your rhythm in terms of what, how to handle your pacing strategies, in what order to do things, how to diagram, whether, whether to read the question stem or the stimulus first. Don't try anything new on the day of the test itself. Do it at least once or twice in the lead up on your practice test. And since we, of course we're two and a half weeks before July, you do have time to try out anything at all that you wanna do before test day itself. And properly simulate your practice tests now to avoid a potential test day drop. So if you're being liberal with the timing or you're taking breaks and stopping the clock, your scores will, might be a little bit inflated because on test day you can't do any of those things. So just take a timed exam on Thursday or Friday or Saturday, rest Sunday, then walk in on Monday and just with the attitude of destroying the exam itself. Somebody asked about watches. You can bring an analog watch to the test, but no digital watches. There have recently been some issues with chronograph watches, the, some of the watches that are LSAT specific that different companies are selling. I would contact LSAC to ask about any particular watch to make sure that the watch is good. I think honestly, a simple $10 Casio watch you can get on Amazon is perfectly sufficient for your needs on LSAT test day. And of course on the digital LSAT, there's a little countdown clock on the upper right of the tablet. And so there's no need for any other kind of watch at all. I do have more on LSAT test day prep on my YouTube channel, and I will share the link with you in the chat here. If you're looking for more information on test day prep specifically, I got a question here on the July LSAT and the September LSAT. The per this person's asking, would you recommend everyone take the July LSAT because you can so easily cancel and take September instead? I'll be done with the September LSAT with my course, so I won't be really ready for the July LSAT in the way that I want. That's really up to you. In general, I would not recommend taking the LSAT just to see how you'll do as a dry run. 
especially with the new LSAT retake limit now. But specifically for the July LSAT in particular, because LSAC is giving folks the incentive to cancel with the free retake and with letting you see your score before deciding whether to cancel, I'd say it's really up to you. It does give you a 50-50 shot at seeing the digital format before the fall when you're taking the LSAT that you really care about. And so for that reason, if you are registered for July, you might want to go ahead and take it anyway, just to get that proctored setting sitting in the digital format. This advice would not apply to any other LSAT, only the July LSAT specifically, because the, the stakes are a little bit different given the nature of that exam. As far as watches with rotating bezels, yes, those should be allowed, but unfortunately proctors don't always know what they're doing and enforcement of things varies and is not always correct. So I wouldn't count on any sort of special fancy watch. Maybe bring a second analog basic watch just as a backup. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.